My name is Liz, and welcome to our Brushless DC Speed Control Systems video. We will be covering the theory and features of brushless products. Which do you think has more power, the AC induction motor on the left or the brushless DC motor on the right? The typical train of thought is the larger the motor, the more power it has. However, when we compare these two products side by side, we can see that although the brushless motor is physically smaller, it has more power. It is a 30 watt brushless motor, while the AC motor is a 25 watt induction motor. Today we'll be covering several different type of speed control systems. I'd first like to introduce PWM, Pulse Width Modulation. Here we can see a fixed sawtooth frequency shown here. This dotted line is going to represent our reference voltage, where the reference voltage intersects the, the sawtooth frequency. We can see the comparator turns on for a specific amount of time, and where the reference line intersects again, the comparator turns off. This is considered the overall on time. If we manipulate this line, we can see that the reference voltage now intersects sooner. This allows for a longer on time. We can see here the smaller the on time, the lower the average voltage. If we increase the on time, we can also increase the average voltage. This is the technology that's used with inverter systems. We'll now discuss the inverters. What is an inverter? An inverter is a VFD, a variable frequency drive that controls the speed, torque, and direction of an induction motor. It takes fixed voltage fixed frequency AC input and converts it to a variable voltage, variable frequency AC output. It outputs three phases. N is equal to 120 F divided by P, where N is the motor speed and RPM, F is the frequency in hertz, and P is the number of poles. Internally in the inverter, there's a microprocessor which makes all of the internal logic decisions. With an inverter, there's always three phases, the UVW. Here we can see the switching sequence of the transistors. Assuming 1, 5, and 6 are on, this gives us our first step. We can see that the phase angles differ by 120 degrees. Hence, the three-phase output. Here we can see the typical PWM voltage waveform after passing through an inverter circuit. We can see the on time starts off low and gradually increases to about the center and then it decreases. At 180 degrees, the wave now inverts, following the same pattern. Begins with a smaller on time and gradually increases. The result of the motor is a variable AC voltage output from the PWM inverter circuit. This is the DC section. 
I'd like to begin with comparing a brush motor and brushless motor construction. Here we have the brush motor with a wound armature in the center. So the windings are in the center attached to the rotor and the permanent magnets are on the outermost portion attached to the stator. With a brushless motor, we have almost a direct opposite. We have the permanent magnets attached to the rotor and the windings on the outermost portion attached to the stator. Here we can take a look at another side-by-side -side comparison of a brushed motor to that of a brushless DC motor. With a brushed motor, we have actual brushes. These brushes rub against the commutator. We have the wound armatures and the permanent magnet. On the brushless motor, we have the rotor, the permanent magnet, a commutation magnet, which is used to manipulate the Hall effect sensor feedback. We have three Hall effect sensors. The brush DC motor theory. We have a voltage source which passes through the brushes, through the commutator, going through the coils. This creates a magnetic field and the permanent magnets either attract or retract, creating rotation. Some merits and demerits of brush DC motors. The brush motors have physical brushes. Over time, these brushes can wear off and or create dust. Therefore, maintenance is involved, often replacing these or cleaning these out. Because the brushes are constantly rubbing up with the commutator, there's electrical noise that can occur. Brush motors are relatively larger than that of our of brushless motors because the windings are in the center of the motor. Therefore, they have to be larger so that it can be able to dissipate the heat. There is no feedback on brushed motors. Therefore, the speed regulation is less when compared to that of the brushless product. Brush motors are relatively low in cost when compared to that of a brushless product. We have the brushless motor theory. The brushless motors have Hall effect sensors, three Hall effect sensors as shown here. They monitor the change in field polarity. Every time there's a change, they output one pulse. The overall output is based on the number of poles in the rotor. The brushless systems have three Hall effect sensors. The Hall Effects ICs are used to monitor the actual motor speed. This information is sent to the drive circuit, and the drive circuit is required to switch the windings in a specific sequence. There's always two out of the three phases on at any given time. Here we can see an example of the switching sequence of the transistors. Assuming transistor 1 and 6 to be on, we can see energy flows through the U phase and out of the W phase. Here we can see a more simplified version. The brushless motor has 
A reference voltage in this example, a potentiometer. We have the Hall effect sensor feedback, and this information all gets sent to a comparator circuit, which then sends it to the current control circuit, which will output the proper amount of current to the motor, thus creating a closed-loop speed control system. Here we can see a speed torque curve for a typical DC motor. Speed is represented on the x-axis. Torque is represented on the y-axis. We can see the difference in the voltage pullout curves for voltage 1, 2, and 3. With a brushless system, the speed control cycle operates continuously to maintain the set speed. This is because of the Hall effect sensor feedback, which is constantly getting compared to the actual desired position or speed. For our products, we have the current limit setting and the max voltage available. This is done to create a flat speed torque curve. The motor can operate in the continuous duty region. In this example, from 100 to 3,000 RPM with a rated torque of 60 ounce inches. We also have a limited duty region, which is also considered the starting torque where the motor can operate within 5 seconds or less. The current limit setting was due to the permissible torque of the gear head, as well as the design criteria for the actual motor, the physical frame size, the wattage, the heat dissipation. Some features of brushless system include compact size, it's maintenance free, we have excellent speed and torque performance, speed regulation, you have a wide speed range and a flat speed torque curve. Brushless products are also energy saving. Here we compare an AC motor to that of a brushless DC motor. We compare the same frame size, a 90 millimeter frame size brushless and AC 90 watt inverter controlled product. We can see that the brushless motor is much shorter as well as the brushless product actually has more power, a 120 watt motor compared to that of an AC controlled 90 watt. Because brushless products have no brushes, they are maintenance free. These brushes often require replacing and or maintenance. Therefore, brushless products save time and cost. Excellent speed and torque performance. In this example, we're, we're taking a look at a speed torque curve of a VLF series product. The VLF series has a speed range of 80 to 4,000 RPM. It has a flat speed torque curve, and the starting torque is twice the rated torque. The speed regulation is plus or minus 0.2% regardless of the changing in loads. The speed stays the same. Brushless motors are also energy saving. They incorporate permanent magnets in the rotor, which generate little secondary loss from the rotor. Here we compare a BLF Series 60 watt product to that of an inverter controlled AC motor 60 watt. We can see the BLF Series has 50% less loss and approximately 23% less power consumption than that of the AC motor.
Oriental Motor currently offers six different brushless product series. We offer AC and DC input type systems. Most of our systems, with the exception of the BX series, has 10 poles and three Hall effect sensors. Therefore, it outputs 30 pulses per motor revolution. The BX series has a 500 line encoder. Therefore, it outputs 500 pulses per motor revolution. Please feel free to continue to view our brushless product videos. If you have any questions or need help selecting a motor, please feel free to contact us at 1-800-GO-VEXTA or email us at techsupport at orientalmotor.com. My name is Liz and thank you for watching our brushless theory and features video.